Today's episode, we're going to be going through the hooking position, the halves, and also the 5.8s based on the value picks you might be looking at, sort of that 350k and above, all the way until the top tier guys as well. So in the hooking position, what you're looking at here really is, do you go for the couple of cheaper guys in a Braley and a Hands or a Lussick? Do you slot one of these mid-rangers in if you think that a Brandon Smith most likely or a little uh, are two guys that can do really well for your side as well. Or do you spend up that bit more? You've got obviously that that bottom tier keepers in the Reed Marnies, the, the Robsons, these types of guys, or do you go up to sort of a, a JMK Cook or a Grant? So we'll see here if we can provide a little bit of potential value for you with these guys so you can spend some money elsewhere. And that's Brendan Smith at 471K, the average of 46 last year. Very, very high volatility rate for Brandon. And the big thing for him was the injuries that he sustained last year. He really finished off the year with a bang. And I definitely think that uh, he could get back to that type of, of standard. Given the year prior, he didn't play too much at the nine position, given he mainly played through the middle. The first year back, he was trying to get things right in amongst having injuries and the team performing poorly. And then he saw that he was much better when the Roosters were better as well. So I definitely think that the Roosters can start better this year after having a couple of years of, of downside, especially through the first sort of really half the season at least. But um, with him, there's no real big room for jump in minutes. Sort of at 58 last year, it's probably a 60 to 65 type of range, even with Connor Watson there. And that's the main issue with Smith. There's clearly upside on his price, given if he can stay injury free. And really, as I said, hoping for a healthy season with the team going better. 55 to 60, if all three of those things go right, uh, could really be a good one for you there in that position at 471. I definitely wouldn't push anyone away from Brandon, but a fairly tough draw to, to kick things off as well. Is he going to be able to get the attacking stats that he needs to do really well? Jacob Little, the next guy on the list at 458.1K. Average of 45 for him there. So the 54 minutes that he got, so PPM is a little bit low on that side. We do need to get him up to about that 65 range and we're, we're in business going pretty close to a sort of 50, uh, sorry, to a 55 average there, which would be really, really helpful, obviously. We do need to find out who they put on the bench to take minutes and if, that, if it's going to be a smaller amount or it's going to be a larger amount there, sort of dropping him down to about a 60 minute roll, which just wouldn't be enough, I don't think. And I definitely would rather go for Brandon at this price point, given you know, knowing that we're, we're unlikely to get little for 70 plus minutes, it's probably what you want to get plenty of value. And then any hooker that's on the bench is likely to take sort of that 15 to 20 minutes there. Sam Rails is next on the list there at 463. And so he has that average of 45 there, which is pretty average, let's be honest. So um, I've got him in there at third position, 5K more expensive than that of little. And really for him, we need him to average close to 80 minutes where he averaged 52 in 2022 with those big minute rolls. So there's definitely a little bit of room for growth, but really he needs to be not injured regularly. And, and unfortunately that hasn't happened in a good while now. And I just think the above two probably have a little bit more upside in attack as well than what Sammy Verrills does. We go to the halfback position. There's three guys on this list. And Jamal Fogarty's the first one. Just found out in the last week there that he's, he's had a little bit of a hamstring injury coming into, well, during this preseason recently. So really for him, he's going to get the goal kicking. And so the team is in his hands at this stage, but is the team likely to get better? Probably not, to be honest with you, unless the young guns come out fire, fit and firing and and uh, yeah, using their speed for, for that, uh, in that sense, with Xavier Savage, you know, Chevy Stewart, uh, these type of guys here to come in and do a good job. Potentially there is a, a little bit of value on Fogs if he can, you know, if he's getting two goals a game um, on average without the miss, for example, or it's three goals a game with a miss at 75% there, then we're looking at, at Fogs having just a, a decent jump just on that. He wasn't someone to have a hell of a lot of, a hell of a lot of try assists and the like this year, but they that might have to increase. It could definitely stay the same if the team's not as great either. So Jamal, there's every chance he get, can get to a 60 average. He's just a bit of the, the meat and potatoes type of guy with a fairly low upside. Drew Hutchison I've got in as the second option. If he does get the seven jersey, I'm really hoping he does. I would love to slot him in my CTW. But um, yeah, just super interested if he does. Uh, and if he does, I'll be picking him in CTW. It's a pretty 
simple for him. He had a game last year. He picked up a double and went nuclear. And uh, yeah, to get a guy at 350 in the seven jersey, awesome. If he doesn't make the team, you obviously don't think about him. But I have him... um, at this tier, probably scoring a little bit less than Fogs, but would have way more value. Um, and yeah, you'd be talking about him in the CT dub. For the third pick, it's Sean O'Sullivan at 461.6K, average of 45 last year. So it's pretty low, to be honest with you. He doesn't really have the upside, sadly, but he could definitely be a 50s guy if you know the Dolphins continue to do well. He started okay uh, before you know coming back and, and, and being a little bit slow on his return games uh, before doing well again. Um, well enough in the back end, but still a very low average at that. And uh, I just don't think it's the halves a position to sort of waste on on mid tier type of scoring. If you're buying a mid, uh, it's likely to be a little bit higher than this at a like a Burton or something like that. But you could play him in your six or five eighth position as well. To finish this video off, guys, we got sort of four guys here in the five eight. Uh, five-eighth mid-tier value there. And as Jaden Campbell kick things off, I'll start him off uh, given he could be a fullback as well. But there are, yeah, there's not a lot of, of mid-tier fullback options, but there's also not a lot of mid-tier five-eighths. So we'll get into him here. Uh, for him at 456K, average of 44.7, I do see plenty of value with Jaden. So he had three 90s and a 70 in 11 of his 80-minute games last season. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, you're looking at four games out of 11 uh, at 70 plus, which is awesome with three almost at the ton. Here's the buy round two, which is a little bit annoying. Um, and I see him improving coming into the season. And also, especially if this is sort of his team now, he's, he's the fullback, it's his spot. That's very, very, that's going to be very, very helpful for him. Main issue here is he's returned from injury recently, and I do need to see NRL Physio's uh, injury bio, although I got to jump, I mean, I'm in the Patreon and, and found out some information on him, and he's not too worried uh, about where he's going to be at coming into this season, um, but there's potential for, uh, in terms of like his scoring, but potential for like re-injury rate, poten- uh, yeah, it could be as well. Sort of the main issue for him is where do you fit him in? So you got, let's just say it's Brown or Munster or something like that. In the 5 8 you've got two wing fullback guns, likely. Um, you know, KO Weeks, if he gets a spot, there you probably have to, uh, can only pick one of him or Weeks, um, unless you go two mid rangers or, you know, him and, and Weeks in the in the 5 8 spot, but that seems a bit light when he'll be out in round two. So there's a few things to, to think about, but it can be very hard, but I, I would like to have him in my team personally, and, and that's going to be my plan. Luke Brooks at 560. He has the halfback jewel as well, but uh, likely to pick him here at six. So he has four seasons in the 50s that shows that you know, he's going to be really a pretty mid-level guy. Potential for, for some more attacking stats for sure at, at Manly, but he will be splitting the ball with DCE. So I do see him being like a 55 to 60 player. We look at last year's the highest score of 72 outside of that Cowboys smashing uh, where he dominated and the whole team dominated there. So... Really, for him, he's uh, not someone with a hell of a lot of upside. I do see, obviously, the Chaboyevichs and, and DCEs, Olakowatsu, these types of guys that could get the big scores when they thrash teams. And Brooksy, you know, probably sits in that sort of 70s range when when they do really well. And then could be a 40s kind of guy when when they're not doing, um, yeah, as well, for example. All right, let's finish off the last two guys. Ezra Mam at 532.8K, average of 52 last year. So it was solid, right? He's fairly expensive at that. And a lot of people are picking him off the back of what he did in that grand final, scoring three tries and being super dominant. The main issue is his low games and his lack of ceiling, sort of apart from that grand final. It's pretty grim uh, because his base stats aren't great. He misses a fair few tackles when he's not getting the attacking stats, which can happen regularly because I'll go out the back to Walshy. Uh, Reynolds is going to get some assists as well. and, And they go through... You know, obviously getting the ball to like a Herbie, getting the ball to Katoni Staggs and, and doing that work there. Or he might get some contributions, but not exactly getting the assist. Uh, and But when he does score tries, which he got, you know, over 10, I believe last year, I think it was 11 or 12, um, and and does get assists, then he'll have some good games, but they're not the big ton games. They're more of like the, the 70 or 80. Um, and then he'll have the 20s and 30s pretty regularly as well. So yes, he could take a little bit of a jump this year, but do yeah you know, the Broncos better than last year? They were, you know, Pretty well the best team in the comp. Should have won the grand final. So tough start to season as well is the other thing to think of. So I think it's a no from me. With Trindle at 439k, 43 average, has the halfback duel as well, which is which is cool. He has a nice draw, which helps. His chances of averaging in the mid-50s, in my opinion. Hines is so dominant though, so expected to be sort of a bumpy ride in scores. Maybe a 20 or 30, 
sort of just in base. And then, you know, some other games where he gets a 70 or 80 with a try or a try assist, which he's not sort of a passenger in that six role. He's definitely someone that could do a great job and, and uh, hit hit players short if it's Teague Wilton or whatever it is, or, or get that ball out to the centers or, um, you know, in, in, whoever, in Talakai, whoever that's going to be, or getting it out to Ronaldo, putting some kicks through. Uh, he's definitely a talented player, so could get have that upside in in, uh, in in attacking stats for sure. But the question is, again, where do you slot him in? Is he your second 5'8"? Uh, do you go a bit cheaper in halfback and not go Cleary or Moses or something like that? Um, or does he become your starting sort of 5'8 with their solid draw to kick things off with the tougher game against the Warriors away in round one? So yeah, there are my thoughts on the mid-range for, for those three positions. There's a few guys in here that I am interested in. Let me know in the comments, guys, uh, if you are interested in any of these guys for sure. And I do appreciate the uh, the growing Supercoach audience that I have on this channel. So uh, if you haven't, uh, if, you, if you listen to this on podcasts, um, amazing. If you haven't listened to a podcast yet, jump on there if you find that a little bit easier to listen to as well. Um, and yeah, jump in the Discord and we'll, and we'll see you all on the other side. See you guys.